This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat, ladies and gentlemen. Logan Sadler is here. Logan is the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial with offices in Hemet and Redlands. We're going to talk about getting you to and through retirement. My name is Ron Stutz. And Logan, it is great to be back with you. Yeah, Ron, as always, great to be here for another show. And uh, I'd be lying if I would say I'm not looking forward to it, or I am looking forward to it, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We always got lots of interesting stuff to talk uh, talk about and always look forward to hearing your take on these things. But uh, first of all, let me give everybody my take on your phone number. It is 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. How would you like a discovery meeting? That is a getting to know you session with Logan Sadler. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later on here. But one more time, that number, please write it down, 888-823-PLAN. Uh, you know, uh, everybody's so excited these days and everybody getting really all cranked up. And, you know, we are so divided these days. Everybody's, mm-hmm. you know, one side or the other. And I'm going to say everybody calm down. Uh, may- maybe it's the result of a couple of decades of social media. And that Mm -hmm. does a lot to stir things up. But maybe it's one of the consequences of living in a post-pandemic world. Maybe it's both those things. But it seems that people have more anxiety about everything than they've ever had, including their money. Now, the anxiety of the last few weeks about the debt ceiling negotiations isn't particularly unique. It's just the current Mm -hmm. item that people can focus their their (laughs) anxiety on. And our politicians go through this all the time. Mm -hmm. How many times have they raised the debt limit? I mean, you know, come on. Yeah. Uh, How would you respond to each of these concerned clients if you got this email from them? Okay, Okay. email number one here. Uh, Logan, we believe there's going to be another Great Depression, and we don't want to have any money in the bank because it might disappear. Where else should we keep our cash? In a Mm -hmm. safe? At home? Buried in the backyard? (laughs) What should we do? (laughs) Yeah, great, great question. And and just kind of backing up a little bit, Ron, like you were saying, it's always something, right? That's one thing I've realized in this business. When I first got in the business, right, you see something going on or or some big world, world event going on, and it does kind of well, man, maybe this is the first time I've ever went through something like this, right? That's instantly kind of what your brain starts to think. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, I mean, like you said, you go back over the last, let's just say the last 10 years or so, I mean, you got crazy presidential elections, right, that have caused tons of fear and panic and excitement and depression, right, all of it in one. You had the pandemic, which, you know, again, that was something that, you know, we haven't went through pretty much anything like that unless you want to go way back to to the Spanish flu type thing. But then again, you could argue maybe this was a little different, then you had like you know the, I remember the uh, remember the Chinese uh, uh, trade tariffs we were going through. Yeah, uh, right, right when Trump took office, I remember so many so many people were very fearful of well what what happens if kind of China cuts us off and what happens if this happens right so and then you look at like the whole North Korea thing. I mean at any point they thought there was a nuclear war going on. So I mean there's been there's just always something and like you said I think the debt ceiling is just now. Um, the number one topic currently of another situation that could be again that could be detrimental to the to the economy and things like that obviously but like you said Ron we go through things like this all the time and I think it's super important to keep that clear perspective when looking at that yeah. and you know I mean so back to your <laughs> you didn't ask me that question but back to your original question <laughs> um, you know I think one of the things is about we've heard a lot of clients and a lot of people I've talked to have expressed uh, that can, same concern similar to the email as far as you know, where should we be keeping our money? Now, one thing I always say is, is a depression or, or a recession, it is always possible, right? There's, there's obviously, you know, history's on my side by saying they do happen. And so I think it's always super important to wonder what if, but you also want to still keep a very clear picture of what your long-term financial goals look like, right? And identifying risk tolerance and all that's super, super important. And when it comes time to saving money in cash, again, you want to look at, you know, the answer probably is it's probably not safer at your house, right? Despite what you guys think. Okay. I've had some clients out there. Um, I had one client I was talking to. He goes, yeah, you know, I keep a little bit of money at the house. And I go, well, how much money do you keep at the house? And he goes, well, about three or 400000 you know, and I go, well probably wouldn't recommend keeping that much underneath the mattress, right? Because I mean, 
I don't know. I don't have any statistics on this. I normally am pretty good at bringing up something fun like that, but I would argue, right, Ron? I mean, <laughs> chances of a house fire or your or your big bank collapsing might I don't know might be arguable there, right? So it's super important to look at some safe places to put money. You want to understand, you know, obviously markets and 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 banks and things like that, what the outcome would be. But it's very important to keep a clear picture of where to look long term. And there's many of safe, different, diversified ways to keep cash. I mean, there's you know CDs. There's treasuries, there's different types of annuities that have some safety to them. So I think it's just really important to understand what your financial goals are and then put in place the uh, you know the right things to do. It probably wouldn't be to bury all your money in the backyard, probably wouldn't be the safest bet. But you know, I understand some of the panic in relationship to what's going on, but just getting a clear picture of where you're at and where, where your assets should be is, is definitely the way I'd go. Yeah, a lot of people go crazy these days just thinking about possibilities. And and I think a, a, a visit to your office or, you know, maybe even a, a phone conversation with you is enough to calm folks down sometimes. Yeah, for uh, sure. Here's another email. Uh, I'm certain that we're living in the end times and we don't <laughs> want to have any money in the market. What's mm. the best way for us to get all our money out? Yeah, um, definitely. I've heard, I've heard this conversation of time or two. Um, you know, I think I think it's really important. I, I can't say this enough. Some of you guys that have been listening to the show for a while are probably like, all right, we get it, right? But if it maybe it's your first time listening, and I will say it is so important to have a solid retirement plan, right? You need to look at what portion of your money should you even have in the market, right? Some of you guys out there, you might be younger, you might be able to take more risks. Some of you guys even might be older and might have solid income streams and things like that where you could take a little bit more risk and have more money in the market. Now, there's some of you out there that might have very limited resources in retirement, right? You might have maybe only social security and then whatever retirement savings you have. So you might not be able to, let's say, take as much risk in the market or maybe none at all in some cases. So maybe it's more important to keep less of your money in the market in that case. But I think we could all kind of look at the statistics and say, the market is traditionally a good spot for a portion of your money, right? And depending on your situation, the portion might be a lot, lot higher or a lot lower. And I think it's really important to, what we always say is kind of really lay that blueprint and that foundation of what your retirement plan would look like. And we have so much technology out there nowadays where we could actually plug in, you know, hey, what happens if a great recession type thing did happen right now? How would that affect my portfolio? You'd be surprised because some of you out there probably wouldn't affect you much at all. Mm -hmm. Some of you might be severely affected, right? So I think it's really important to kind of get a, you know an idea of where everything's at and create and, and work with someone like us to help create that blueprint to make sure that maybe we should have less or more in the market, right? And finding that ideal uh, retirement for what you're trying to accomplish. And again, you don't want that that always stressful about you know every time you see something on the news, you go, oh man, am I not am I going to have to go back to work or is this going to affect my retirement, you should have a more solid plan than just hoping, you know, things are going well. You want to know kind of what would happen in certain scenarios and making sure you're looking at that data constantly. This is Ron Stutz and you're listening to Logan Sadler on the Financial Beat. Logan, of course, said we're Gary Financial and we're saying basically everybody calm down. A lot of people are excited, upset, worried, just concerned. And, uh, you know, some folks think devastation is coming tomorrow, but we're saying just, you know, calm down a little bit. Let's think about this. Uh, here's another email you might get, uh, Logan, and I don't know if you've gotten one like this, but could possibly <laughs> have. I was supposed to go on an African safari this fall, but had to cancel it because I was recovering from a broken ankle. Boy, we've been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> I can reschedule it for next spring, but it will cost me nearly 30% more to go at that time of year. But I feel it's worth the extra money because the animals are quickly dying off because of climate change. Is it worth paying a little extra to make sure I get the chance to see them? This might be a little bit more difficult to answer. I don't know. Yeah, this is a tough one here. No, <laughs> um, you know, it, again, I've actually, believe it or not, I've had similar questions, uh, situations like this where they've been posed this way, but um, not exactly this. But for example, the way I would tell you to go about this is is looking at your plan. Again, if it's something where you could afford to pay 30% more and it's not going to affect your income streams or affect your plan, and it's something you really, really wanted to do that bucket list trip, then yeah, probably go ahead and, and book it. But if you're one of those people where maybe that first trip, you barely could afford it, right? Maybe it was going to be really a flex on the financials, and now it's going to be 30% more, meaning that it's probably way out of your budget. I probably wouldn't go on it, right? I would tell you to cancel it or, or reschedule it for a time 
that will be more sufficient because you don't want one trip to affect maybe the impact of the next 15 years of your retirement, right? And not saying it would, but for some of you out there, it could. And so I think it's important to kind of weigh out the pros and cons of what it's going to cost because, again, you don't want to swipe a credit card for $30,000 or $10,000 or whatever the trip's going to cost and not be able to you know pay that back or be caught in that ongoing cycle of where it's just going to be stacking up interest payment on interest payment. So you want to make sure that the trip that you're going to go want to have fun and enjoy doesn't make you uh, painfully not enjoy coming back, right? So making sure it's a uh, it's in the budget is really weirdly really where I would stand on that one. Okay, one more email here, and uh, let me ask you about this a lot of situation. emails today. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and this is one that I know you've gotten a lot because we've talked about this a lot on this show. Mm-hmm. I know that we talked about waiting until I'm at least 65 to start my Social Security, mm-hmm. but my best friend is telling me the money is not going to be there later on, so I ought to claim it now. <laughs> what do you tell this person? Well, first off, Ron, I think you have access to my emails. I feel like you're reading some of my emails I get here, but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean that that's definitely a question I got. I've get I've gotten a lot over the years, and uh, it's, it's especially a lot more recently. But I mean, it's one of those things where with everything with financials, it's always based off of how things can go, right? I mean, almost everything you look at, Ron, right? I mean, there's it could go this way, it could go that way, and Social Security is no different. One of the things I always say is the chances of a lot of you guys that are collecting it right away, the chances of it being changed very, very recently for you guys is probably very rare, right? I think it's going to affect maybe a a lot more of the changes to come will probably affect the the younger generations. Um, Again, anything could happen, but if I was a betting man, that's where I would put my money. And one of the biggest things is, is the impact of Social Security. So when I run a lot of these plans for clients, Ron, that come in, you know, we'll go through our process, we go over all their financials, their 401ks, pensions, all this different, all these different types of information, and then we start plugging in Social Security. And many people are really amazed by maybe if their plan, let's say they want $100,000 a year for Joe and Sue um, when they retire at age 65. And we start playing with, okay, we could take this much out of your 401k, this much out of your IRA. You got some uh, pension maybe coming in. And in. But what happens if we delayed Social Security one or two years? What the impact would be? And almost always, it's a positive impact on the plan being improved, right? And I think so many people are, are just kind of amazed that really delaying it from you know 62 to 65 makes that big of a difference, really? And, and a lot of times, yes, that answer is yes. And so I think the biggest thing we're looking at Social Security for many of you is one of the biggest investments you have and probably one of the largest income streams you might have. And so I think it's just super crucial to really crunch the numbers and see when is the optimal time to take it. Could there be some changes to it? Absolutely, right? Any government program out there, there can always be changes to it. But I think the odds are probably in your favor for those of you that are younger or I'm sorry, that are that are older, where you, it might not be as big of an effect to you, if at all. So I think it's super important to kind of outweigh those pros and cons and really try to find the right time to take it for your situation. Yeah, a lot of people out there saying, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is yeah. falling, <laughs> Social Security is broke, it's going to go away, and, yep. you know, come on. <laughs> Everybody calm down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good, good point. Calm down, take deep breaths. And, and I think that's one thing that, you know, in my opinion, Ron, I think that's one of the things that a lot of, uh, of a good financial advisor trait should be is being able to be that kind of calming factor. And I think um, that's one of the biggest things we always offer to our clients is being that voice, being that, being that rock during times like this, right? I mean, I always say being an advisor during the good times is, is an easy job, right? Yeah. You, don't really have to, you don't really have to do much. The markets are going up, investments are making money, and most people are pretty, pretty calm and okay with sticking to plan yeah. when, when everything's going well, right? But when things are volatile or when we have uncertainty or when there might be a threat to the, to the overall outcome of the income plan or the retirement plan, that's where a good advisor should be able to step in and show you the value of, listen, here's the plan we built. Here's, here's our, you know, what happens if the market goes bad? Well, we've already talked about this. We've already shown you. What happens if Social Security got cut, right? Well, you know what? You still have some other assets we're not drawing off of, or you have a rental property, or, or whatever the case is, right? I think having that advisor to be able to go through the actual plan, so many people out there that think they might have a, a real financial planner might only have someone that is a broker or just an advisor that just you know sells investments, and they don't really put the legwork into building out that financial plan. And that's one thing we've found that a lot of our clients that are retiring and they have, you know, maybe they've worked 30 or 40 years, they have half a million dollars, they got $3 million, whatever the case is, they want someone to help 
walk them through what their retirement plan is going to look like and when to do certain things at certain times, when will be better for them, when would be worse for them, and being able to lay out all those options to help build that retirement plan that they're going to have confidence in. So if you're one of those people out there, again, some of you might have been listening to the show for a day. Some of you might be for a couple of years now. So if, you, if you're getting close to retirement or just starting retirement, might be a good time to go ahead and make that phone call and see if we could add any value to your retirement plan. And here's your number, 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-7526. Call that number today. Leave a message with your name and phone number. You will get a call back from the good folks at Regary Financial, and you can set a time to have your discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. Not really a meeting, it's a conversation, and it's a getting-to-know-you opportunity. You get to know him, he gets to know you. He's going to ask you a lot of questions about, you know, you're going to do most of the talking. He does most of the talking on this radio show, but in this particular case, when he gets together with you, you're the one who's going to do most of the talking because he needs to know what's important to you and what kind of lifestyle you want in retirement. What are your hopes and dreams? It's all about that, not just dollar signs. 888-823-PLAN, that's your number to call for Logan Sadler at Regary Financial. We'll have more coming up in just a moment. You're listening to The Financial Beat. Are you tired of feeling like taxes are draining your bank account? Do you want to keep more of your hard-earned money in your pocket? Then download Logan Sadler's 2023 Guide to Tax Planning. This guide is your key to tax optimization and is filled with expert advice, the latest tax laws, and strategies for reducing your tax burden. With the help of Regary Financial and Insurance, you can rest assured that you're making the most of your retirement savings. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 and get the guide for free. Just text ADVICE to 21000. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too, and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show, because we have some important information coming up. We're back now with more of The Financial Beat. Logan Sadler is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know. Logan Sadler is the VP and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. That is Regary, R-U-H-G-A-R-Y Financial. And uh, you can get in touch with Logan, have a conversation with him. If you like, the number to call is 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-7526. Call that number today. Need your name and your phone number. You'll get a call back and then uh, you can have your conversation with Logan. And he's going to talk with you about the, some of the same things that we talk about here on the radio show. And, of course, that may vary depending on what you want to talk about. 888-823-PLAN. That conversation is not going to cost you anything and not going to obligate you to do anything at all. Uh, Logan, did I spell Regary correctly? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to tell everybody how you say it. You know, yeah. that, that's an important thing for me. But uh, what is the correct spelling on Regary? <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's always one of those fun ones, right? Yeah. Uh, it's R-U-G-G-I-E-R-I. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> fun I, Italian I, name. I, I intentionally said it the way that it's... Uh, Said it the way that it's supposed to be said yep. and uh, spelled it that way as well. But you know the correct spelling. It's not necessary to even know that. All you got to do is go to financialbeatradio.com if you'd like to find out more <laughs> about Logan Sadler. Back in the day with previous generations, you know, the old thing was, you know, you work 40 years at a company, you retire, they give you a gold watch. And that doesn't sound all that great. But then you have a pension, and yep. you pretty much don't have to do a whole lot, you know, because that's probably going to serve you to the for the rest of your life. And and back then, the rest of your life might not be a long time. These days, it's different. Yeah. It's it, it's all on you. You know, it's your yeah. responsibility. So, well, some people listening to you might have said, "Well, what the heck? I didn't get a pension, and I didn't get a gold watch, right?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How does the lack of a pension change retirement planning for today's pre-retirees? 
I think it drastically changes it, right? And not to be dramatic there, but I, I do think it makes a big change because let's do a little example of somebody who retired 30 years ago. I mean, like you said, they worked till 60 years old. They had turned on Social Security and then they turned on at 62, they probably turned on Social Security and then they probably had a pension. And so if they retired at 60 or 62 or whatever age they retired, they probably had, you know, a 90% of their income needs from a pension and Social Security. Right. So back in the day, they didn't need a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars when they retired. They probably needed fifty thousand or forty thousand. Right. And so when they retired, they got, you know, two or three thousand a month from a pension. They got two or three thousand a month from Social Security. And that was basically it. Right. And they were they were fine. And some of them might have saved some money on their own. And that was it. Now, when you look at it, people are retiring and, you know, they're making, you know, a hundred thousand a year, two hundred thousand dollars a year. And they're really, a lot of it's reliant on them putting away money in the 401k. And what happens is that a lot of our clients are retiring and they have, you know, 500,000, a million, two million, three million dollars in their 401k, depending on, you know, asset size. And now it's like, okay, I'm retiring. What am I supposed to do with this, right? How am I supposed to guarantee or generate income in my retirement plan that's going to last? Because I think not everybody out there, but we could probably be honest that most people when they retire, they want income, right? They want a guaranteed income stream that's going to last. They want something like social security or like a pension. And so I think that's where a lot of the struggle is, is finding those right investment mix to get that. Because I mean, the statistics are out there where a lot of people, when you look at your retirement plan, they succeed or, or probably have a more enjoyable retirement, the more income they have that's guaranteed. Because I think when you have less income that's guaranteed, most people are like, they're not as la they're not allowed to spend with as much confidence, right? So I think it does kind of throw a little kink in things. And I think it has drastically changed a lot of the retirement plans or the way we think about retirement with less of us having pensions. Okay. We're talking about pensions, which is certainly something that if you have one, you're very fortunate. Not many people have them these days. For those people who have been offered a pension buyout, where they take a lump sum at retirement instead of a monthly income, how do you advise those folks? Yeah, that's a that's always a, a, a fun one to walk through because it's a little bit different for everybody, right? Every pension I've worked with out there is a little bit different. For example, like there's you know many times where it might make sense to leave it there and take the payment, right? Maybe it's going to offer you three or four thousand dollars a month uh, for as long as you live. Maybe your wife gets seventy five percent or or a hundred percent, depending on what option you take. Um, but essentially, it might be a really really high guaranteed income stream. Now that and, and a lot of the times it's a little bit higher in some cases. Now where it makes sense to move it is when you move it, you have a couple different options. So some of them say, like you were saying, Ron, they'll give you a, a payment. Like let's say it's you know three thousand dollars a month if you leave the pension there, and they'll pay you out an income for your lifetime. Then there's another option where maybe they give you five hundred thousand dollars as a buyout, and you could take the money and run and invest it how you want to, right? So you could put money in the market, annuities. I mean, pretty much do kind of whatever you want to do with depending on what assets we're talking about. But you pretty much could do, you know, you have the whole world of investment options out there to choose from. Mm -hmm. Now, the tricky part becomes when I take the lump sum, I'm now giving up a guaranteed payment, right? So if I take that lump sum, where do I go to get something that I would like guaranteed? And why do people take the lump sum? A lot of the time is because is maybe we can get higher income somewhere else. Or if something happens to you, when you take the lump sum, that's your money, right? So you could, you know, leave it to your heirs. It's easier to be passed on for multiple generations. There's a lot of deciding factors there of when to do it. But that typically to me is when most of our clients, it makes sense is where it's like, hey, I got kids and if something happened, I would like them to receive, you know, a lump sum of cash or, or whatever it is and, and, and structure things that way. So we could do the lump sum where they take the buyout. You're listening to Logan Sadler on The Financial Beat, uh, Ron Stutz here. And just one more question in regards to pensions. And uh, right now it's a very inflationary time. I mean, we're all mm -hmm. seeing what inflation can do for your budget. Whether someone has a pension, how do you plan for inflation since that income stream is not going to have the same buying power in the future? Yeah, that's very that's very important. And like you said, I think we all kind of forgot about inflation until this last you know three four years or so, right? Because yeah. inflation had been at a relatively you know slower pace than normal or, or about average, I guess. And so it wasn't really really talked about. Many advisors really didn't put that into their plan. Um, until really the last you know five years or so, maybe a little bit less, but it's been one of those things where inflation has just gone to become one of the biggest topics. And I've always thought it's one of those big things we got to plan for because inflation, if you're going to retire now, right, and you're retiring and your retirement you know longevity is 20 years, 
chances of inflation being, you know, we talked about a few shows ago, the Big Mac, right? The Big Mac cost going up from, you know, I think it was like 60 cents to five bucks, right? Over a 30 year time frame. There's the odd that that could happen in your retirement plan, right? So you're $5,000 a month now, you might need $8,000 or $9,000 a month down the road. And so I think it's very important with pensions, a lot of them do not adjust for inflation. And so it's super important when looking at income streams, like even we talked about annuities, a lot of the newer annuities now have inflation adjustment on them, where if your accounts perform, the income could actually increase throughout the years, which I think is a huge benefit to many of you out there. Because again, the chances of us needing more income down the road are probably pretty high, right? Because if we're retiring at 60, when we're 70, we're still probably going to be doing things, right? Still be very active and still be spending money. So having that is very important. I like those annuities with the inflation adjustment, as well as using different bucket approaches, we call it, or maybe we have some money we're not touching now, and we're going to let it sit for five or 10 years and grow solely for some extra income down the road to help kind of ladder in some different income. Because inflation is one of those things where not only now, but down the road in future decades, we're going to need uh, some adjustments for inflation throughout the throughout the you know time frame. So I think it's super, super important to build in how that would be affected. And like, like I always talk about, Ron, I love to nerd out a little bit on a lot of our plans we do for our clients, and as I could actually show them, you know, hey, if we did it, didn't account for inflation and inflation happened, look how much this would hurt the plan. Just yeah. a one percent or two percent inflation, you know, five years down the road can significantly reduce your chance of success in your retirement plan. So, you know, like we always talk about, it's super important. And as you guys could tell, I always love talking about anything financial, and that's what I love about the show here is to be able to be very broad and talk about a lot of different things. But a lot of you guys out there that are approaching retirement or getting close to retirement, and you might have a pension, you might have 401ks, you got Social Security, you have all these different things to kind of look at. And uh, it's definitely important you find the right partner and the right person to help put all these different pieces together. And that's why we work with a lot of different CPAs, a lot of estate planning attorneys, mortgage lenders. You know, there's so many different things that are going to come up in your retirement plan that could be very crucial to, to the outcome of it. And that's why we feel, you know, offering that sound investment advice, but also partnering with a a lot of these other you know professionals that you're going to need to help put the pieces together and transition you to and through retirement. And that's what Regary Financial is here for. So again, if you're getting close to retirement or just starting retirement, give us a call and, and let's sit down and go through our discovery process and tell you a little bit about our firm and the value we could bring to your retirement plan and see if we're, see if we're a good fit to work together. 888-823-PLAN. Please remember that number. Write it down if you have it already. 888-823-7526. Uh, but use the word plan to help you remember it because everybody needs a plan. 888-823-PLAN. That number will put you in touch with Regary Financial, serving you in Southern California. Two convenient offices, Redlands or Hemet, and you can come into one of those offices and have a conversation, or you can have a Zoom connection if you like. Logan is certainly willing to do that, and uh, we'll talk with you any way you like. Maybe you might want to just have a phone call and get some answers to some of your questions. That's fine, too. Not going to cost you anything and not going to carry with it any obligation at all. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. Logan Sadler works with three generations of some of the client family is at Regary. Many of those clients have been with the firm for more than 25 years. Logan's been doing this for quite some time. And again, he is the VP and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. So if you want to talk to Logan, call 888-823-PLAN. Again, cost-free, obligation-free. The Financial Beat will continue with more in just a moment. Do you hear that? That's the sound of a plan that has some serious issues. Ah, much better. That's the sound of a plan that was created by someone listening to the financial beat with Logan Sadler. So which sound is your financial plan making? We're back now with the financial beat. I'm Ryan Stutz along with Logan Sadler. And Logan not only has been doing this radio show for quite some time, but if you have missed previous shows or if you're not able to catch the whole show when you when you listen, there are podcasts that are available that you can go and, and listen to those. And in addition to that, there are multiple new YouTube videos out there that Logan Sadler has done. And he, as he likes to say, nerds out on a variety of topics. <laughs> and, and if you are interested in any of those, well, I'll just let Logan how you, uh, tell you how you can get those. 
Yeah, if you'd like to check out the podcast, you can head over to wherever it is you check out podcasts. Might be Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, wherever it is, and type in The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And there's uh, over 100 episodes for you on the podcast platform that are recorded and put up there on there. And again, they're added each week, so there's always new content. As well as on the YouTube channel, like uh, Ron was saying, you can head over and type in The Financial Beat. I know one of our most popular videos we've done is How Much Should You Have Saved for Retirement by Age 60? A lot of people like that one. Yeah. And we have many, many others that we've done on there about retirement planning, Social Security, tax planning. A lot of those you know, really important topics for many of you listening to the show right now. So head over to YouTube, type in The Financial Beat beat and click subscribe because again we do videos each week for you there to check out hey let's talk about third-party financial planning it seems like now would be a great time for a legitimate third party to burst onto the political scene and a lot of people say hey let's have you know let's have three parties instead of just democrats and republicans let's have you know there's well there's the green party and there's you know there are independents out there and all this kind mm-hmm. of thing but largely it's republicans and democrats mm-hmm. uh it seems like now would be a great time for that to happen so uh, it, it never does even though people talk about it especially mm-hmm. during election season so let's instead pretend that you've launched your own party in the financial <laughs> planning space Perfect, perfect. <laughs> I never really considered you a politician, but, you know, uh, ex- <laughs> explain each of these important components of your platform. So, you know, let's do it. We're talking about platforms all or uh, politics all the time. So keeping people as safe as possible by managing risk, that mm. would be an important part of your platform, right? It would. And it's funny because of our planning process, right? We always talk about our discovery meeting and all that. That is one of the f- things we spend a lot of time talking about is identifying risk. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's one of the biggest components of your retirement plan is risk tolerance. Now, some of you out there, you might have a, you know, a real clear picture of where your risk is. And many of you out there do not, right? And so one thing we always do with anybody that comes on board with our firm is run what we call a risk report, right? A risk analysis of what type of risk are you comfortable with? And it's funny because so many people say, I'm moderate, right? Or I'm conservative. And those are great terms, but the problem is a lot of people don't actually know what that means, right? So let's say they're being moderate and their account goes down 25% in during a, you know, during a recession or during a bear market. Many people will go, well, what the heck? I thought I was moderate, right? Well, that, you know, according to what moderate terms are, that would be kind of what a moderate portfolio could potentially go down, right? And they're sometimes shocked. And so I think it's just so important to understand where you're at for risk tolerance, right? There's so many things out there now where we can kind of test what your portfolio potentially could do throughout certain situations to get kind of a clear picture of where your risk tolerance would be. And again, many of you out there can take on a lot more risk than others. You might have pensions, you might have social security, and you might have a lot more assets that you don't really need to produce a whole lot of income from. So maybe if you suffered a bigger loss, it might not really hurt your overall retirement picture. Some of you, it could drastically hurt your retirement picture. So I think it's one of the biggest things is to look out at how to really diversify and to meet that right risk tolerance to where it's going to carry you through your retirement. Because again, retirement could be a five or a 10 year thing, but you know, odds are showing it could be even maybe even a 20 or a 30 year time of your life. So making sure you plan and prepare for it by taking on the right risk tolerance to not be too conservative because you will still want to make money, but you don't want to be too aggressive to where it might really hurt the longevity of your plan. Here's another part of your platform with your third-party financial planning, Logan. Uh, I feel confident in saying that you would have uh, uh, the uh, desire to unite the different elements of a portfolio (laughs) by helping different pieces work together in harmony, something that never happens in politics. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If we could all just agree, to, if we could all just agree on things, right, that would be great. But we don't, right? So one thing on financial planning is funny, Ron, because I I kind of fall into that category on the retirement planning side too. Because you hear so many of these people on on radio or on TV or wherever, you know, you shouldn't use insurance products. All your money should be in the market, right? And then you hear so many of these um, insurance only people say, you know, all of your money should be in universal life insurance and annuities, right? And so uh, you need to be safe. Right, and so it's funny because there's so much diversity, even in the uh, even in the uh, you know financial planning space. And I've always been a clear a clear advocate of overall financial planning might include many different asset types. Right, so us being insurance licensed and licensed on the market side, I think it's so important that many clients out there, not everybody is the same, and there's many clients that we work with where they might need some of their money in the market 
but they also might need some insurance products because those might have some pros and cons that they can add to their to their plan to maybe even improve the scenario, right? So I always tell people one of the biggest things is you want to have growth in your portfolio. I think we could all agree we want our money to probably grow for us. The other thing is I, I'm a big believer in alternatives. That's why we use uh, real estate investments, structured notes, a lot of different things like that to where maybe if the market's going up or down, those might be doing opposite of what the market's doing, or maybe even a little bit better than what the market's doing. But you also want principal protection and income, right? A lot of us out there, we might want some of our money to be principal protected to where if the markets are down big or down at all, that maybe won't be affected. Also, we might want some that's providing lifetime income. So if something is going on in our market side, let's say we have, let's say you had, let's just make it an even number, six hundred thousand dollars. You might want two or three hundred thousand in an income annuity that's providing you safe and guaranteed income. Well, the other bit of your money's in maybe growth investments and alternatives and other types of asset classes. To me, that is what sometimes will create that harmony, right? Like you said, Ron. So I think it's super important when you're out there meeting with financial advisors or, or going over your plan. It's okay to have different asset classes, right? I hear so many people say you shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket, right? And they come in and basically all their money's in the same ETFs or stocks, right? And so I think it's super important when you're putting together a financial plan, you want to put together several different asset classes and different investments that all complement each other. If they're all in the same thing, they're all going to have the same result, right? They're going to be up or down or, or sideways, whatever the whatever that investment's doing at that period of time. And so I think understanding, that's one thing I always try to preach here on the show is understanding that there's many different cl- asset classes out there. I'll never say the market is bad. I'll never say cash is bad. I'll never say real estate's bad. I'll never say annuities are bad. They all can have a fit in a financial plan, just depending on what type of situation it is and what you're trying to achieve with that investment. Just can't make generalizations like that, for sure. No, no. It always cracks me up. I, I, hear, I hear some people, well, you know, annuities are bad, or I've had some clients come and say, the market is bad. I should never have any money there, you know? And so yeah. it's funny because it, it, it's just not always the case, right? You really want to make sure you understand your situation and understand that there might be some different tools out there that might actually improve your plan. And you got to keep an open mind. And uh, Logan Sadler can tell you about a lot of options you have in the financial world that you might not know about. If you'd like to have a conversation with him, it's 888 8 Three plan eight 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 two three plan. I'll give you that number again. Coming up in just a few minutes. Here we're talking about uh, Logan Sadler's platform. If he's running for office, third party <laughs> planning, financial planning party, <laughs> getting <laughs> dollars back to work by eliminating lazy money is mm-hmm. one thing that I'm sure you would concentrate on. Yeah, it's funny because I, you know, I always tell people when they come in and stuff, you know, so many advisors are like, well, don't keep any money in cash. Everything should be 100%. And I don't think that's the case, right? I think cash is a very real spot in a portfolio and in a retirement plan. You want to have an emergency fund. If something happens, you want to have cash to get to to where maybe you can get by, you know, three to six months of paying all your bills and stuff like that before you even had to touch investments, right? If something happened, maybe even a little bit more. But what's funny is I have some clients, I actually had one the other day, it was a a lady that came in, let's call her, let's call her Sue, okay? And she came in um, about three months ago, and it was funny because she, again, listened to the radio show. She called in, and uh, she was out of town, so we actually did a Zoom. She lived out of the area, so we did a Zoom meeting, and we were talking. And you know, she was saying she was worried about the market and things like that, but she was kind of saying you know, her portfolio really hasn't done much over the years, and she was just kind of wanting to get a better plan together because she's at a spot where um, she's going to start needing some extra income and things like that here soon. So I said, yeah, no problem. You know, Our process will go through everything in the first meeting of kind of just getting to know each other and understanding what it is you're trying to accomplish and really what you're looking for to make sure we're the right fit. We found out good fit to work together. So we were like, okay, you know what? Go ahead and send me all of your statements, right? Because she wasn't really sure what she was in. She knew she had some IRAs and a brokerage account, but wasn't really sure what she had going on. Well, after running a risk report and looking over the analysis of the overall holdings, she had, I want to say she had around $400,000 mm-hmm. and almost like $300,000 of that was basically in cash, Wow! right? So she had wondered why she hadn't been making much money throughout the years. That was because basically around $100,000 of her four hundred dollars was invested. Right. So what that means is a lot of her money over this past five years or so has been really getting eaten up by inflation. And during those good market years, she wasn't really making that much because a lot of it was in cash. 
And then on the bad market years, she was losing money and her cash wasn't really doing much, but she was also losing money because of inflation, right? So she had too much lazy money, right? So in her case, she had way more than six months of bills and expenses in cash. And so I think in that case, that that much in cash was actually significantly hurting her situation to where, you know, it kind of was crippling the portfolio because even if her market money did well, it was only such a small portion of her investments and the rest of it was just in cash. So it really had no chance to go up. So I think it's super important that understanding how much should we keep in cash? Because again, I'm, I'm a big advocate. Cash is a good thing to have, but we don't want to have too much. We want some of our money working for us. And with treasuries and CDs and you know annuities and different alternatives right now that are pretty safe, that are paying good, um, I think it's a good option to kind of look at right now, even if you don't want to put all your money in the market, so to speak, right? So finding that balance, I think, with lazy money and and uh, <laughs> there's a difference between you know having a, a reserve and having having just crazy amounts of lazy money to where it might be hurting your situation. So if you're one of those out there, definitely think it's time to let's let's sit down and strategize and look at some different options to see how we can maybe increase the uh, cohesiveness of your portfolio. Just one more plank in your uh, in your platform uh, when you're running. For- office <laughs> and this is <laughs> this is really important because this is the number one fear for most folks mm-hmm. uh, you would work on eliminating the fear that people have of running out of money outliving their money in other words yep yeah it's well and just to throw a quote out there too or to make it official i probably am not running for office right but mm-hmm. <laughs> i would not be i don't think i'd be a great politician but um <laughs> no i think when looking at like what you said ron i mean running out of money i mean eliminating that fear of people running out of money one of the things I always ask people at the discovery meeting is, you know, I ask them about, you know, their family, what they do for a living, what they're trying to accomplish. But one of the first things I ask also is, you know, what are your biggest concerns or fears with your retirement plan? And almost always it's, well, I don't want to run out of money, right? We got taxes, you got long-term care, you got all these other things. But one of the most common is I'm worried about running out of money. And for a lot of us out there, it could very well be something that we should be afraid of, right? Because it might be a situation with your current plan, you might be on track to run out of money. And I don't mean because you're having bad returns or I'm not not talking about any of that. I just mean because a lot of us don't actually go over our retirement plan and look at all the different things that could happen, right? How, what if we live five years longer than we thought we would? Would that impact the plan? What happens if tax rates went up? How, how would that impact your plan? Well, maybe that means you'd have less of your money coming in, so you'd have to take more out to net more, and means you could potentially run out of money quicker, right? As well as what happens if we have too much risk with our portfolio and we're taking too much money out? Well, I mean, you, do, you could run a chance of running out of money. And so I think it's a very real, real concern for many of you out there. And I always feel one of the biggest ways to combat, to combat that fear and to help put that fear at ease is having a comprehensive retirement plan, a written income plan. Many of you out there are just taking income or RMDs or things like that out of accounts, and you really haven't gone over a structured income plan. If, if I took this much out, had this much of a return or this much of a loss, here's how long my income could last, right? And putting in things like maybe adding annuities are a great way to, in some cases, uh, help eliminate that fear with some of it by having a lifetime income annuity. Because now you know, as long as you and your wife live, you might have a guaranteed paycheck forever, right? With some of your your money. So I think putting together those comprehensive components and really looking at your overall financial plan through a broad scope, not not through the not through the lens of just a you know of a of a zoomed in uh, zoomed in binoculars. You want to look at it from a broad scope and understand all the different components that can sometimes add or increase uh, the risk of running out of money and making sure that you don't want that retirement plan where you're always like, man, should I be spending this? Or can I, should I be taking less money out? Or should I be doing this? You should have a well-constructed plan that you feel confident in and know that you have an advisor and a team behind you that's helping making sure that you're still on track to go ahead and, and really you know achieve that retirement you always wanted to and making sure you have the right team behind you to, again, give you that confidence. So that's one of the things we always offer, right, Ron? Here's that discovery meeting. And that's part of the process is a lot of you guys out there come from many different backgrounds. You might be a doctor, you might be a nurse, you might be a construction worker, whatever the case is. Uh, But if you're getting closer to retirement, or maybe just getting ready to start thinking about retirement, maybe you're 50 years old, 55 years old, heck, maybe even 65 plus. um, that's, That's what we specialize in is helping people get 
to and through retirement. So definitely think it's time to give us a call and, uh, again, just see if we'd be a good fit to work together. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Call that number right now. Well, wait. Go ahead and call now, and uh, Logan needs your name and your phone number. They will get back with you at uh, Regary Financial. He mentioned a moment ago having a great team. He has an outstanding team of folks who are ready, willing, and able to help you get to and through retirement in the most efficient way possible. And the point man and all that, your point guard, so to speak, will be Logan Sadler at Regary Financial. 888 888- 823 plan 888 823 plan your number to call if you'd like to get started if you want to just find out more about the process uh, get to know logan a little bit it's up to you it's not going to cost you anything and there's no obligation involved 888 823 plan you're listening to the financial beat and we'll be right back are you tired of feeling like taxes are out of your control Take charge of your financial future with Logan Sadler's 2023 Guide to Tax Planning. This comprehensive resource is more than just a collection of tax tips. It can help you optimize your Social Security, retirement savings, and investments. And with the help of Regary Financial and Insurance, you can rest assured that you're making the right decisions. Download the guide today and start taking control of your financial future. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 and get the guide for free. Just text ADVICE to 21000. This is the Financial Beat. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial, Ron Stutz here, and uh, let's take a moment. You can have an opportunity to get to know Logan Sadler a little bit more. He is a multifaceted personality. I think you're going to like him when you get to know him, but here's <laughs> here, let's unpeel a layer of your personality here, Logan. What bad habit that you had to break was the hardest? Now, you're, we're asking you to reveal a weakness in the past, but something that you've fixed and sent. Yeah, so, you know, this one's actually a uh, pretty easy one for myself here, and it may sound funny, but we've been talking a lot about health in this episode. So, I'll be honest, mine was really cutting down on soda. I look back a few years, and I used to I used to drink five, six, seven sodas a day, yep. and uh, I've really cut that back down. I really maybe have one or two a week. Um, so, that was one thing I'll say that breaking a bad habit, you know, doesn't have anything to do with financials on that one, but it was a... Uh, uh, a big one for me, cutting down soda, trying to be a little bit healthier in what I'm, what I'm putting in my body there and, and take advantage of maybe some water <laughs> and some coffee here and there. But really cutting down soda was a big one for me, Ron. Yeah, that can make a huge difference. I once did the same thing, and uh, I was drinking five or six of them a day, and uh, you know, I, I cut back on the same, it's easy to same do. thing you did. Yeah, it, it really is. It's, it's a lot harder uh, to break the habit than it is to get into the habit, but that can make a huge difference in your health. So, hey, thanks for letting us know that. That is our Getting to Know You segment here on The Financial Beat. And there's more on the other side of this timeout. Don't you want to see sharp and not be flat in retirement? This is The Financial Beat. Welcome back to more of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. The beat goes on, as they say. Remember that at Regary Financial, they have great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and Medicare specialists to help offer you well-rounded guidance. They take everything into account when it comes to your financial life and your life in general at Regary Financial. Logan Sadler's number, 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number and you can get a, a conversation going. We call it a discovery meeting. You get to know him. He gets to know you. And you're going to talk to Logan. And 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen. Uh, we have some good questions in the mailbag. Joey is in Anza. And uh, Joey has a question. He says, my mom is in her 70s and has a life insurance policy that was building a cash value, but now the cash value is getting smaller. She's still paying the same amount every month. So what's happening here? Yeah, great question. Not not something that's uncommon to, to hear about because it might be might be pretty confusing, right? So let me break it down. So it's a couple things that could happen, right? So basically, uh, as you get older in a lot of those older policies, right, the cost of insurance might be going up inside the contract. So less of the money you're putting in is going to the cash value side and probably more towards the insurance side, which could eat up some of the cash value that's in there. 
as well as the cash value might not be performing or keeping up with the cost of, of the increases of insurance. So it means it's eating up more of your cash value than you might have thought. So I think some of those components can sometimes be a big, a big indicator of a policy maybe going to where it might even force it to lapse at certain times. I always say one of the biggest things or one of the most important pages on a life insurance. So there's a lot of, you know, variable life insurance. There's a lot of uh, universal life insurance, whole life insurance, all of those things. One of the biggest pages I always focus on is not the illustration of how good everything looks. It is the guarantee page. So on the guarantee page, if you're ever looking into getting an insurance policy, it's important. You could actually look at the guarantee page where if the cash value didn't perform at all and premiums were paid, how long would the policy for sure, essentially, uh, stay in force. Because a lot of the times, some of these policies can can get, if the cash value doesn't perform how we need it to, and the cost of insurance, things like that are going up, it can definitely eat away a lot of the uh, a lot of the growth inside the cash value and could could sometimes cause the policy to lapse if we're getting if it gets too small. So definitely can be a little confusing. So again, I'm life insurance licensed. So send it over. Give us a call. Let's do a discovery meeting. We can kind of walk through mom's situation and look at how it's how it's how it's going to play out there and maybe get a back end uh, you know set plan B put together for if there's anything else we could do differently or at least just give you some general education about the policy. Okay, Joey, that number one more time is 888-823-7526 or 888-823-PLAN. One more question today. Uh, Logan, it's from Stephanie in Marino Valley. And Stephanie says, my husband isn't great with money, so I pay all the bills and handle the decisions with our retirement accounts. As we get closer and closer to retirement, I'm starting to wonder if I should make him get more involved. What do you think? Yeah, that's a that's a great question and something I'm I'm a huge advocate for. I think it's very important. A lot of times I meet with just the husband or just the wife in some of these meetings, and I'm always I'm a big believer in bringing the spouse to the meeting, whether it's a Zoom or a phone call. Yeah, and I and it, I think it's just a big you know a big importance because I mean you know you're married, Ron, and I'm married, and so we could always we could use this as a great example where if something let's say your wife handled all the finances and only met with the financial advisor and the tax person and the lawyer and all that. If something happened to her, right, you're you're kind of like, well, what am I supposed to do, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it kind of leaves. I don't like to say use the word leave you hanging, but it kind of leaves you hanging, right? Yeah. And a lot of the times, the spouse might think they're doing them a favor by handling it because maybe it's not their strong suit. When in a lot of times, it might be doing the opposite. It might be helping them right now, but it might hurt them in the future because now they're trying to catch up on everything after something happened to the spouse. And I could, I think we could all agree, it's probably one of the worst times to learn something <laughs> is when you're going through all of this. Emotional emotion and, and, uh, you know, trauma and things like that on that side of losing someone. So I think it's super important to include the spouse. Now, one of the things I always say is just them being there in the meetings and having a relationship with the advisor can be very, very important. And I think it could also be very, very valuable because now they know they already have a relationship. They already kind of maybe have some ideas of the plan. I'm not saying they got to be an expert, right? They don't have to know all the ins and outs and maybe as much as the other spouse does, but just having that general line of communication and knowing that, you know, hey, you're my person too, right? You you guys are a part of our team and I know who to call if something goes bad, I think is really, really important. So I would highly, highly encourage by getting them going. And I think one of the biggest ways to get them involved is just by starting some meetings where maybe it's not really, really in-depth meetings, but just kind of a meet and greet and maybe going over some general stuff, right? Maybe Social Security or maybe you're getting ready to make some changes in your 401ks or whatever it is, right? Just some general stuff to kind of get them introduced to, to the advisor and get them kind of involved in the plan, I think can be a huge, huge uh, benefit looking long term. It's really great to have both people in the relationship on the same page. and uh, It is. And uh, that's very important. And I know you try as many times as you can to get mm-hmm. both parties to come in and, and everybody understands it. Uh, one more time, Logan, why is it so important? Important. We've come to the to the end of another exciting show here, and why yeah. is it so important for folks to get in touch with you now? Yeah, there's there's just so much going on. Like we mentioned in the first segment of the show here, there's just a lot of different uh, news and, and uh, media outlets out there that are there's just so much changing, right? And a lot of it's good, and a lot of it can be bad in some cases, but I think. 
now more than ever, it's so important to make sure you have a solid financial house put in order, right? You want your retirement plan. If you're getting ready to retire, maybe you're 50 years old, 55, 60 years old, whatever age you are, if you're getting closer to retirement, and maybe in the next five years or so, or maybe you're just getting ready to start, or maybe you've already been retired, there's so many different components to your retirement plan that are, you know, can be very exciting and a lot of fun, but can also have a lot of impact on the success and longevity of your retirement plan. And I, you know, I think it's very important when you're looking out there, if you already have an advisor or maybe you don't have an advisor, I think it's super important to make sure you find an advisor that is, you know, works with clients that are similar to you, right? So again, we always say I, we have a lot of different clients, but most of our clients are typically approaching or near retirement or in retirement. And that is our specialty of helping get them to and through retirement successfully and putting together these comprehensive plans that go over the five pillars of retirement plan to give you that confidence that you're going to need in your retirement plan and have a firm that has been there and done that and been around a long time to help assist you and your family and transition successfully throughout your retirement. So give us a call. Like we always say, it doesn't no commitment or anything like that when you give us a call. All we want to do is sit down uh, in person or via Zoom and really just kind of touch base on your situation. And we'll tell you right off the bat, if you know what, it's just not a good fit. It sounds like you need something else that we're, we're not equipped to handle, that we will we'll gladly do that. But a lot of the times, it's just a great time to get to know each other. And I think a lot of clients are very surprised of how comprehensive we get and how much of an impact we might be able to make to your overall plan and to your overall family. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. That is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler, get to know him. Sometimes he has folks come in, they put it off for years, making that phone call. Maybe they've been listening to the show for a long time and just haven't gotten around to call in the office. And they come in and Logan says, hey, you could retire now if you wanted to. Wouldn't you like to know that if that was the case? 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. There's no cost for this. No obligation. Simply a service that Logan Sadler offers to all the folks who listen to this show and to the podcast and to the YouTube videos. Uh, Regary Financial yeah, has two convenient offices to serve you in Southern California, Hemet, and also Redlands. And the number to call if you'd like to set up a discovery meeting either via Zoom or in one of the offices, 888-823-PLAN. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler. Logan, it's been fun. It always is. Yeah, it has been a good time, and it always flies by a little too quick. And uh, we, I like Ron was saying there, I pre appreciate all the support throughout the years here on the radio show and the podcast platform. And thank you a lot of you guys going over to check out the YouTube. We also appreciate that. And uh, we'll be back here again next week with another episode of the Financial Beat to provide some value and some education about your retirement. Just one more thing, I, I just want you to know how much I appreciate it when you nerd out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next time on the next edition of the Financial Beat. Regary Financial and Insurance Services, Inc. and BD Financial Group, Inc. are separate and independent entities. The information provided in this presentation is presented for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, investment, tax, or legal advice, nor does it constitute an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any securities.